Okay, so what do you think? Are scary movies appropriate for kids? An article on parents.com is saying they can build resilience, but it really does depend on your child's fear factor. So how young is too young to handle a scary movie? Well, it was uh, 1979, and I was just about to turn six, and Jaws was uh, broadcast on television, I think for the first time. And because we watched whatever my parents watched, uh, we watched Jaws. And what? The, the strange thing is I had no problem getting into the water after seeing it, but I had trouble getting into bed because I thought that's where Jaws lived because <laughs> my, dad, my dad didn't help. He would come down the hall and go, da 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 -da. And I just scream. But the thing is, I loved the scream and I loved being scared. And I, I, I'm not suggesting that everyone after today's show sit down with your six year olds and dial up Jaws <laughs> after dinner and watch it as a you know a family sort of bonding experience. But if you're if you're you have to read your kid, you know. I, I think yeah. we loved being scared and we were also reassured that you know this is make believe and and the idea of like. I think it cultivated our imaginations and, and activated them in a, in a, in a strange way. Hmm. I don't you just need reminded my me actually. Imagination. I don't need my imagination um, activated by um, the axe murderers and things that come out of the dirt with, uh, like, I, 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 sorry, Jess, that is not my idea of imagination activation. You just reminded no. me, Lainey, of like the thriller video. Do you guys remember when that came out? Uh, that was almost yes. too scary yes. for me. Speaking of stuff coming out of the ground, I was <coughs> petrified. But that was also the era when, I don't know, maybe it was just my family. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of TV at home. But when I was with my cousins who all lived in the city, they were the ones who were like uh, outside of the eyes of our parents watching scary movies. And so forever like um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, um, Mike Myers. My cousins were obsessed with horror movies and I could never handle it. I was always screaming. I was always like the this person. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely couldn't handle scary movies. And guess what? I'm an adult who can't handle scary movies. But when I think about emotions, you know, Marquesa, she can't handle them either, but she avoids movies that have any kind of emotionally charged anything. So I don't know what that says. She doesn't want scary. Guys, she doesn't even she doesn't even watch Frozen because she doesn't you know, want to be sad. Spoiler alert, she yeah. you know, parents die and she doesn't want to be sad. She avoids all emotion. So I don't even know what that means. <laughs> It's interesting. I mean, she's sensitive. I think that's actually really good. And you you do have to look to your kids to sort of guide you. Uh, just similar to you, I had an experience when I was really young, the first horror movie I ever saw. We had a babysitter at the time. This is the 80s. In my head, her name was probably Jackie, and she may or may not have been smoking and wearing short shorts. Anyway, <laughs> we crept downstairs, and she was watching a movie that has, like, been seared into my brain. Um, it's called uh, Horror Express. I know this now because I actually, maybe a decade ago, was like, I I wonder what that movie about the train and the Neanderthal who was frozen on it, who melted and then started killing everyone on the, the, the train. Wonder what that's called. And of course, Google told me. So uh, it was like a 70s classic. It was terrifying. It's actually terrible. But I do feel like it did set the stage for me to become a, a real huge horror fan. Because I liked that feeling of being a little bit thrilled but I guess on some level knowing that this, like I guess on some level was not real at all. And it's funny because Jaya has the same obsession. He really likes creepy things. And we stumbled upon this show called Face Off. And I think they sometimes play it on, on um, the sci-fi channel. And it is, it, it like is reveals all, it's, it's like oh. basically a reality show and it shows you exactly how they make scary makeup and sci-fi. Oh, that's cool. oh, yes. And so that actually is a really good tip for parents who with kids are kind of interested. It demystifies how all of the kind of special effects makeup works. So it was a real I, like huge help. But here's the question, Sin, that. is did it make you more resilient as an adult? Like did watching that stuff young because you loved it and you too, Jesse, because you loved it. Lainey and I are on team like no scary. But did it make you a handle emotion or scary stuff better as an adult? I don't know about that. I mean, just you, I feel like you just are who you are. I was, I would like that feeling of being thrilled. I liked creepy ghost stories. I think some kids just aren't into that. Just mm -hmm. did it make yeah, I, I think I would, I, I think I would agree. And I also want to ask the parents 
or everyone actually, if you think the medium matters at all, because Mel, when mm. you said thriller, it reminded me of Vincent Price. And I remembered that we would listen to this record and it was him reading stories like the Headless Horseman and the Telltale Heart, the Edgar Allan Poe story. And we would lose our minds we were so scared. Like, my heart is pounding thinking about how thrilling that record was. And even something like Harry Potter, like, there's some scary parts in that book. So audio and reading, like, does is it is it different? Isn't that a, a beautiful thing for kids? Again, Lainey, going back to the imagination and sparking it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that there is... I think it's a stretch to say that if you watch Poltergeist with your children, your children will grow up to be more resilient. I mean, there are other ways to learn resilience. I consider myself a pretty resilient person, but like Mel, I do not mess with those kinds of movies. Maybe because some, for some, I don't know how this happened, but my mom watched Alien and she scammed me into the theater with her. And after Alien, she couldn't get out of bed for three days. I also was likely traumatized because that is why I don't watch those kinds of movies, but I don't think it has a relationship with how resilient I am. And in fact, like those jump scare movies um, and the movies that are designed to make you shocked and, and react that way, some people react very violently, like me. If I am scared, I will hurt people because hurt people hurt people. So do not <laughs> do not hurt me with your horror. And I'll tell you I'll tell you like a story that just happened last year. It was very very early in the morning. I was leaving for work. It was very quiet. It had snowed. You know when it snows outside seems even more still. And I was taking the scraper out of the trunk of the car. My neighbor was walking up behind me and decided to be neighborly and said hello. It startled me so bad, I grabbed the scraper and was about to attack my neighbor. I was going to wail on my neighbor. Um, he's a firefighter, so he like jumped back and then walked away quickly and later on like apologized to Yasik. So there are some people who, if you scare them, you're looking at, you know, hurt, bodies and uh, like an actual horror movie. So be careful with your scary things, mm. people out there. Mm -hmm. Be careful, Noted. especially at Halloween. Hate Halloween. No. Um, can we move on now? Don't want to talk about this anymore. God, why are you making me even talk about it?